Now, U.S. President Barack Obama has pledged financial support to farmers crippled by a record drought in California. He says he's fast-tracking the delivery of $200 million in aid to help farmers who've lost stock. Obama's flown over the parched fields and talked to people about their problems. California is living through some of its driest years in a century. Uh, right now, almost 99 percent of California is drier than normal. And the winter snowpack that provides much of your water uh, far into the summer is much smaller than normal. And we could see that as we we're flying in. And while drought uh, in regions outside the West is expected to be less severe than in other years, California is our biggest economy. California is our biggest agricultural producer. So what happens here matters to every working American, right down to the cost of food that you put on your table. Well, Obama also linked the drought to global warming and has unveiled a new $1 billion fund to address problems created by climate change. It's hoped it will help communities like those suffering from drought become better equipped to deal with the environment. Tom Ackerman reports. California is America's biggest agricultural state, so the worst drought in more than a century has a national impact. There you go. Just days after President Obama signed a hard-fought farm bill, he's applying $100 million in the legislation to compensate California farmers for their loss of livestock. More money is being allocated for emergency water programs and farmland conservation. But the White House is also telling farmers they have to view the current dry spell as just part of a grand pattern of extreme weather, a pattern that promises to get worse because of global warming. When you take a look at the intensity of the storms that we have seen recently and the frequency of them, the length of drought combined with these snowstorms and the sub-zero weather that we've experienced, the combination of all those factors convinces me that the climate is changing and it's going to have its impact and will have its impact and is having its impact on agriculture and forestry. The Obama administration is asking Congress for a billion dollars to research and implement ways for farmers to adapt to the changing climate. But many Republicans in Congress, even from rural areas, express doubt that global warming is real. And they're resisting Obama's efforts to deal with it through tougher regulations, curbing carbon dioxide emissions. But science is now showing that there's not a relationship between man-made gases or CO2 and climate change. For that reason, the only justification for using it is if they could make things uh, more economical. The Obama administration is arguing that refusing to act will indeed prove more expensive in terms of health, environmental, and agricultural damage than the cost of shutting down industries that contribute to global warming. It hopes that, given their grim outlook, American farmers who usually vote Republican will agree. Tom Ackerman, Al Jazeera, Washington. Well, for more on this, we're joined by climate change expert and economist Kristen Sheeran. She's also the director of economics for the Equity and Environment Network and joins me from Portland in Oregon. Very good to have you with us on Al Jazeera. So Obama's planning to ask uh, for a billion dollars from Congress to help communities manage the effects of climate change. Given that federal spending on droughts, storms, floods, forest fires exceeded a hundred billion, in 2012. Is the billion that he's asking for enough? Uh, absolutely not. It's, it's literally a drop in the bucket compared to what lies ahead, not only just you know, what we've experienced in the past. Um, with climate change expected to exceed two degrees warming by the end of the century. And that's a threshold, of course, that scientists and economists have long warned that we shouldn't cross. So then how then is this uh, fund likely to fare, even though the billion isn't mm -hmm. enough, uh, how is it likely to fare in a Republican-controlled House? Um, well, I'm sure the fiscal conservatives in Congress are going to fuss about spending a billion dollars in climate adaptation, like they fuss about you know any federal spending uh, at this juncture in time. What's ironic about it, though, is that they they continue to deny the role that climate change plays um, in driving federal deficits. Um, if we look at 2012, you mentioned $100 billion in federal spending on costs related to Hurricane Sandy, wildfires, droughts, flooding. Um, 
uh, you know, the, the, that $100 billion that year, that was the largest single non-defense discretionary budget item that year. I mean, this is the climate disruption budget. It cost us $100 billion in 2012. That's going to keep going up year after year after year. So if fiscal conservatives want to be prudent about how we're spending our money, we should be prudent about investing in climate mitigation as well as adaptation. So what should the administration be doing then? And can they realistically get anything done again in that Republican-controlled House? Well, I mean, as to whether they can get anything done, there's certainly a lot that they should be doing. I mean, to frame this as a climate resilience fund is a terrible misnomer. I mean, resilience is about the, the capacity to not only anticipate but to influence change. It's about uh, thriving, not just surviving. There are some immediate and obvious first steps this administration can be taking, it should be taking, if it's serious about climate resilience. It needs to pull the plug on the proposal to build Keystone XL. It needs to begin shifting federal subsidies for fossil fuels to clean energy. It needs to invest in America's failing infrastructure. It needs a jobs program and adequate social safety net to support working families. And America needs to step up and assume leadership at the global scale for climate change. This is how you build resilience to climate change. Um, and this is how you make more resilient communities. Thank you very much for your time there. That's uh, Kristen Sheeran joining us from Portland, uh, Oregon. Very good to have you with us. Thank you.